Why is it important to put intent in all? Spiritually speaking, you were created in the image of an intentional God. Last year we talked about we were created in the image of a creative God, and that is true. But we also created in the image of an intentional God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says the following. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, or for, without form and void, depending on your version. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. There was nothing, and then God created something. The earth was void without form, and God put order to the earth. If you read, if you go through Genesis chapter 1, just, just know it's in Genesis chapter 1 and, and follow along. I'm going to skip through until I get to verse 26 and 28. But if you look through it, not only did God create the heavens and the earth, in the beginning he created the heavens and the earth, it was formless, and he said, let there be light, and there was light. Then we see in verse 6 and 8, he said he separated the sky from the water. He created a vault. He created the sky and separated from the water. And then he created the land and separated the land from the water. And then he created the land to have seed-bearing plants and trees that gave fruit with seeds. If you're taking notes, write down seeds because I'm going to go into that over the next couple of weeks. We're going to go into how do we be intentional and we're going to go and we're going to do a breakdown about seed time and harvest like you guys have never heard before. Seed time and harvest. God created the seeds. The seeds are something important. We're going to understand the value of the seed next week. But he created the land having seed bearing plants and trees with fruit that have seeds. Then he created the lights in the sky for the night and the day. Okay, then he created the water animals, the sky animals, and the land animals. Okay, and then we get to verse 26 of Genesis 1. And then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule. The word rule here means dominion. It means to maintain order over, to maintain dominion over. Some of us in our house would, would be much better served if we maintained order of different areas in our households. Some of us would be much better served if we maintained order over our finances. Can I get an amen? Can I get a well? Because something's got to come out of that. Okay? Some of us would be better served if we maintained order over the food that goes into our mouth. Thank God for the fast. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? He said that we were created in his likeness, in his image, so that we may rule, that we may maintain order over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that, creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. He created them male and female. He created them, verse 28. God blessed them and said to them, guys, God intentionally created all these things. Then he comes and he creates man. And he says to man, here is your intention. Here is your purpose. Here's what you got to do. Not only do you have to rule and exercise dominion, but then he says be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Mankind was created by God after he created the platform for mankind in which to exist. He was we were created intentionally with a plan. A couple years ago, a couple years ago, opened up the new year with a message on wisdom, wisdom, where we're talking about exercising dominion through wise movement. That same truth applies today, but we got to learn to be intentional about what we're doing. We go through life just being accidental about stuff, and we hope stuff works out. You don't go to your workplace and just be accidental about something and hope to keep your job, do you? No, of course not. We have to learn to be intentional, put intent in all. The Bible from Genesis to Revelations is all about the will, the intent, the plans, and the purposes of God. It's all about that and how he deals with his people and his people deal with him. 
It's very clear. So spiritually speaking, we have got to be intentional. We have got to put intent in all. Why? Because we were created in the image of an intentional God. Are you hearing me? That's the example he left for us. That's what he told us to get done. If you have been negligently passing through life without being intentional, it's time to repent. It's time to change your way of thinking, do an about face, turn around, and head in an intentional direction. Are you hearing me? Like, 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 like there's no plan when you wake up. I get it. If you were on vacation, that's cool. I asked my wife several times, what's your plan for today? Nothing. That's okay. That was like her actual plan, and that's okay. It was rest and rhythm time. That was good. I, I can't just do nothing, so I had to have something to do, but she was nothing. She was okay with that, right? That's okay if that is the plan, but you can't go through life every day saying, what you going to do today? I don't know. Whatever happens. And then people like to spiritualize it, whatever the Lord tells me. But then you go through the day and I listen to what the Lord is trying to tell you. That don't work. Here's the thing. It, we, we have to be intentional because we serve an intentional God. But practically speaking, we have to be intentional because practically speaking, your life depends on it. Let me, let me explain to you why being intentional is a life-changing matter. Your life depends on you being intentional. Your life depends on you putting intent in everything you do, putting purpose behind everything you do. Why? Because your relationship with God is where it is if you were intentional or not. If you've got a good, if you can tell me you've got a great relationship with God today, then I will know that you had intent behind your seeking of the Lord. I will know that you were intentional about being where God is and spending time with God when he wants to spend time with you and being obedient to what God has asked you to be obedient to. If your relationship is good, you were intentional about it. If your relationship with God is not good, then you were not intentional about that relationship. Are you hearing me? It is what it is. I think it was last year or the prior year we had a whole series on neglect. What was the whole theme of neglect? Whatever you neglect dies. If you're not intentional about something, it's going to die. If your relationships with others, or let me say it this way, your relationship with others is where it is based on your intentionality. The effort and the level of your intent with other people has caused your relationship to be what it is. If you have not been intentional in developing relationships, guess what? That's why it is where it is. Your marriage is where it is based on your level of intentionality. I said, practically speaking, we got to learn to put intent in all because our lives depend on it. Our marriage is where it is, whether or not we've been putting in the intent or not. If our marriage is not where we want it to be, for those of us that are married, maybe we need to start putting more intent in it. Maybe we need to put more purpose into it. Are you hearing me? Like, like, I'm just speaking facts, guys. Your life depends on it. We wonder, why is our marriage the way it is? It, 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 it's because you've not been intentional about it. You've not put intent in all. We've not put intent in date night. We've not put intent in, hey, when we really don't like each other, let's at least not fight. You understand what I'm saying? How many guys know you can love somebody but not like them for the moment? This is a fact. Why was my wife the only one to go amen? I'm just saying Come on. Like, what in the world? That's how you know you got real pastors. <laughs> when, when, when the pastor's wife is not, not ashamed to call out the pastor in the middle of a preaching. Lord of mercy. Like, that's, geez. <laughs> you, you're, you're, can, can, your life depends on it. Your, your health and your weight is where it is because you have either been intentional or not been intentional about it. Am I right or am I wrong? Don't complain about your weight if you're not going to be intentional about it. Simple as that. You have to put intent in all. Your finances. Oh, Pastor, you, no, stop, stop. We were good with the weight. Don't talk about my finances. Look, if you are broke, 
it's my circumstances. No, it's not. That's a lie of the devil that he wants you to believe. Because if that is your belief system, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to change the way you are thinking because God's got plans for you. God's got ways. He, he's, he's put stuff in you to be creative, to be able to make a way. He's put something in you, a seed. Get ready for next week. Are you hearing me? We've got to learn to be intentional. If our finances are where they are, they are where they are because we were either intentional in them or not intentional in them. Uh, I saw a meme yesterday, and I loved it, and, and it was like right on point with the teaching. Thank you, Mr. Harris, for the post. He said, get into the habit of asking yourself, does this support the life that I'm trying to create? When you're looking about being intentional, you have to ask yourself that question. And, and what I'm about to do right here or not do, does this support the life that I'm trying to create? Like, are you being intentional? Does your level of intentionality, write this down if you're taking notes, does your level of intentionality support the life you are supposed to create? I don't know about you guys, but I know God's created me to do some stuff. But I also know that there are seasons in my life where, where my intention, my intentions are good, but my intent in all, what, what I'm doing, I'm not being intentional about it, and that's no good. And so there are seasons where I know God's asking me to do something, but I'm not doing what I need to get done in that season. Has anybody ever else been there where you know you're supposed to do something, but you've not given it your all? Am I the only one? Raise your hand. So somebody just, just, just join along with me. Just say, I got you, Pastor. Don't worry. It's not really my case, but I'm not going to leave you hanging. All right? There's seasons in our lives, guys. In, in, in this year, in 2024, and in every day for the rest of your lives, you have got to be intentional about stuff. There are stuff you have got to shut down yesterday. Shut it down. There's stuff in my life that I got to shut down yesterday. Shut it down. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's the, the, the people around you. Shut them down. If they are not helping you to be intentional to where you got to go. Not only are there things you've got to shut down, there's things you better start up. Are you hearing me? God's put something on your heart and you've been sitting on it way too long. There are things you need to shut down. There are things you need to start up. 